By the end of this video, you will understand what is meant by function application and partial function application. So function application is nothing more than the process of giving particular inputs to a function. So we see here a function called add three ints and we supply it with three inputs, six, two and five, and then it chucks out an output. Function applications apply or call the function as we just showed you by using its name followed by its argument and these need to be separated by spaces. What we see down here is the type declaration for this function. Now in the next SLR we're going to look at an actual functional programming language called Hask Haskell and you'll become clear in a lot more detail what this actually means. But in essence this is a line of code you would actually write in Haskell to lay out and declare the structure of this function. You start with a function name and then you supply it the data types that the function is taking in, so an integer, an integer, and an integer, and finally the data type the function returns, which itself is an integer. Now here's an interesting statement. Every function in Haskell takes only one argument. Now, you're probably thinking, how can that be true? We've literally just looked at a function that we declared with this function type called add3ints, and it clearly takes in three arguments. I can see it here in the function declaration, and I can see it here. You know, We pass it three integers, and it chucks out an integer. So how on earth can this statement be true? Well, let's have a look, because this is really important to understand. Now on face value, when we look at this function declaration, it does indeed look like we have three arguments being passed in. But this is actually exactly the same as this, and this is what's really happening behind the scenes. Now we're going to step through this, but what this is showing is that a function only ever takes one argument. And if when you declare it you actually set up more, what happens is it only takes one argument, and then it returns as its result a new function which will process the remaining arguments, along with a value which you output. So let's explain that. We're going to think of this funnel here as our function add three ints, and we've supplied it with the values 6, 2, 5. Now remember, a function in Haskell actually only takes one argument. So when we run and execute this line of code, what happens is add three ints runs, and it takes the first argument, 6. It doesn't take the other two because a function in Haskell takes only one argument. What actually comes out of this function, its result, is a brand new function. And here it is. It's basically what's left. This function takes in one argument, which is add y, and it adds it to the result which has come out from the previous function. So this is a new function called add y to x. That function now runs. Its output is to generate a brand new function. Now, of course, its output was to take 2, which came in from here, and add it to 6. So the new function that's generated is a function which takes in one value. It's going to be 5, that's the last one left and adds it to 8, and then outputs a value. So this new function is add z to 8. That function takes one argument, and it chucks out the result 13. Now you can see we've colour-coded these to match the various uh, words up here. So as you can see, although there's an illusion, and indeed it is quite easy for you to declare a function that looks like it takes in multiple arguments, it actually doesn't, because every function in Haskell only takes one, and its output is to generate new functions on the fly when you execute it. Now this is really important, because you need to understand something called partial function application. And this takes advantage of what we've just shown you. This is the process of decomposing multiple argument functions into smaller functions with less arguments, and ultimately only one. So suppose we uh, declare the following function. 
uh, we have sum. And sum is going to take in two integers as arguments, and its output is going to be an integer which is a result of the sum of the two. Now let's say we called the function as follows, sum 5. Now this would result in an error, as the function is requiring two arguments and we've only given it one. However, we can use this partially applied function as an argument to a separate function. So, here's the original function, and here's partially applied function. We've taken sum 5, that's partially applied because sum requires two arguments. And we've made that equal to a new function called add 5. Now add 5 itself is going to take in an integer and return an integer. We can use this new function and it will add 5 to whatever we apply it. So partial application results in us fixing or binding the value of some of the inputs, in this case just one of them, to a function so as to produce another more specific function. Okay, so let's just go back um, to our previous example, the one where we were summing up three integers, and let's just have a look at partial function application in practice one more time to understand this. So, we're going to partially apply to add three ints and just apply it the first value only. We're, this partial function application is going to be part of a new function called add five. We're then going to call add five, but only pass it two arguments, the third being supplied here. The original function, as you know, takes three parameters, but we're only supplying six and two. The last parameter is supplied by add 5. Add 3 ints runs first, is partially applied to the parameters 6 and 2, and the resulting function is then applied to 5. And we can see that process happening here. The result, of course, is the same as just calling add 3 ints and supplying it with 6, 2 and 5.